guys, welcome back to another video. It's been a really long time since I've uploaded to this YouTube channel, and I thought I would start the Idol Game series again. Because so I feel like I did a not so good job last time, and um, there's not enough tutorials out there. And I feel like that I've improved over the ever since I've uploaded, and I thought I'd start fresh. Um, so we're gonna go to Unity. Uh, I already made a new project, but I'll show you what it looks like if you're new to the Unity. So you, um, you'd open it up. It'll look like this. Here are my games. Uh, you click New, uh, name it whatever you want, and for the template, choose TD, uh, 2D, and then just choose whatever location you want. Uh, so I got a project already. So we're gonna set this up. Um, so what's nice about the latest one is that it starts you off with scene. You don't have to save it and then make a new folder. Uh, to clean it up, we're going to create a few folders. We're going to do scripts. And I don't think we'll be using images, so we'll just keep scenes and scripts for now. Um, and a 2D game requires a, um, a canvas. So we're going to right-click or go to create. And we're going to go to UI, and then we're going to go all the way down to canvas. So now we have a canvas that's been created. Uh, this adjusts the size of your free aspect window in the game. Um, so I'm a mobile, I'm a mobile dev now, so I like to make custom resolutions. So right here, you click the plus and make whatever you want. So for a 6S, it's, oops, that's vertical. Um, you just do 640 by 1136. That is the, um, iPhone 6S default resolution. So that's 6S portrait. And there we go. You have a resolution ready to go. Um, but if you want to do Windows, just do um, make a new label, uh, 1080p, 1920 by 1080. Do whatever you want. So now we have a, a 1080p window. But I'm going to go with um, the success. So first, um, we don't see anything because there's nothing on the canvas. Uh, we're going to create a text which we right click on canvas, UI, text. I'm not really sure how to use Text Mesh Pro, but I would recommend text if you're a beginner. Text Mesh Pro has more options and you can do a lot with it. Uh, change it to whatever size you want it to be. I'm just gonna put it dead on the center. Um, let's see, we'll have our text like right here. Now the alignment, we want it in the center for each vertical and horizontal. And let's make the text bigger. Let's make it like 50 font so we can see it. Change the color to whatever you want. I'm gonna change mine to white. And let's let's do a currency as coins. So we got zero. All right, so now we can see stuff, but we can't really do anything yet. So we're gonna right click on canvas. We're gonna go to UI and then button. Let's create a button for us. Scroll to zoom in. You can put this wherever you want. I'm just gonna put mine right in the center. And if you have any uh, sprites you want to use or images, just uh, you can change it here if you wanted to. But I'm just going over fundamentals for this video and creating the basic concept. So I'm going to try to keep these tutorials really short and simple. Um, all right, so we're going to do click plus one, do plus one coin. We just changed the button text by. Um, opening up the button by clicking here and then the text right here. So what we can do now in order to actually do something, we can make a new script. So I'm going to do it on the text just to make it easier. Or what you could do is that you can right click on canvas and create empty. Uh, I'll just do my game manager here. Since I'm making a million scripts, you can all do it. You can just do it all in one. Uh, we're gonna just going to call this uh, idle tutorial game and a script and it's a C sharp all right double click to open it I have um, Visual Studio installed so it will automatically open that for me once it does all right so we have our new script we start with our um, our packages um, system collection system collection generic we really won't need these so we just need unity engine and in order to access our text right here, we have to copy paste that and do dot UI because that basically gives us all the methods and um, objects and classes, which is something like uh, 
oops, public text, for example, which we'll need. So we're gonna do make a create text. We're gonna create a text real quick. Name it whatever you want. I'll call mine coins text. Where that will be this text right here. So I'll just call this coins text just to make it easier for you guys to see. Um, so I'm gonna delete these two methods because we only need a few at the moment. And in order to actually have numbers, we have to create um. You have to create a variable. I'm going to do double because they have a limit of 1 to the 308th power, which is a big. So if you really want to make a big game, that's highly recommended. But you can import other stuff, such as like something called Break Infinity, where you can go really, really, really big, like 1EE7. But that's not for today. Um, so a lot of t what I see is that a lot of tutorials actually do floats. No, don't do floats because that's one to the third, like one to the thirty eighth, and that was my big mistake when I became an idle dev. So I started using floats instead of doubles or beyond. So we're just gonna use a double. It's just good practice, anyways. Floats are not as good. They're really good for um, um, like progress bars and stuff like that, or timers. Um. So we'll just save the last coins. All right, so now we have a text and we have a number named coins, but it doesn't do anything yet. So we want um, to create a method called public void start. So what this does is that Unity automatically runs the start method right as you load the project. Well, there's a few that start before that, but this is the main one that you want to use to initialize stuff. So we're going to start with coins equals zero. That's if you want coins to start off with 100, okay, you can start with 100. This is the good place to start. And that's all we need to do there for now. Next, we need something to update every frame. That's public void update. This updates every frame. Um, since I'm on a 144 hertz monitor, it will run this 144 times a second. So um, let's see. We want our coins to display something. So we're going to copy paste our coins text. We're going to put the dot text attribute to it, just so we know that we're saying, okay, we want to edit the text right here. This is labeled text. If we wanted to change the font, we would do dot font, but we don't need to do that. So we got lots of stuff we can do in the code. So we want the text to say this right here. So we're going to do uh, coins um, colon space we need a space because if we don't then there will be no space between it so every character matters and then we'll add a plus and then we'll do our coins which is the number so now when we run it'll it'll say this exact same thing right here right now unless this coin value changed to one so let's say we want this 123 and we save it um so game manager so before we can do anything in order to actually display text we have to drag the coins text into the script right here into the editor or the inspector and now it should work so we should see coins 123 there you go one coins 123 that's this right here so if we change this to zero it'll say coins zero so we need the click button to actually do something to make this number go up that's the point of this game right so we're gonna make our own custom method that we will call using the button we'll call it um, click you can do clicker clicked or just click just whatever you want you can literally call it um, Joe if you want to you just gotta remember it but I highly recommend you not doing that so public void click will work so on click when we click this button we want this number to increase by one how do we do that? We do coins plus plus one, or plus plus semicolon. Why? So, but this is not a good method. This is good if you buy an, a single upgrade that goes up by one permanently, like only one time. Or if you, let's say, restart restart the game and you want to count how many times you restarted, this would be a good use for that. But we don't want to do that. So we want to do plus equals one. Because we can actually change how much this adds by. We can change it to 10 if we wanted to. But for now, we're going to do plus equals 1. So we're going to save that. And a lot of you are probably beginners um, uh, at coding. But basically, this is the class. This is your packages right here for the first two lines. 
these are your variables, your data, and these are your methods. So we have different ones. We have um, constructors, which are made in uh, separate classes, which basically give the, this is basically constructor right here, your start, because you're basically start, you're basically building the whole class starting with coins equals zero. And then we have the updates, which we have the mutator, which basically changes what's going on in the code. And then we have the, another mutator, which click, which we're changing the value, the value of coins. All right. It probably made no sense, but um, if you've heard those terms before, that's just a quick refresher. So in order to actually make this button do something, we want to click on the button and scroll all the way down to the button script. And then on the click function right here, we want to click the plus. And then we can drag the game manager, which is where our script is located, into the object right here. And then for the no function, we click that. We click our script name, idle tutorial game, and then we click the click function. There you go, idle tutorial dot click. That is this right here because it's part of the idle tutorial game class. So now once we click, it should work. We should see this number go up by one. There you go. It goes up by one. Because every time you click this button, it calls the on click function, which calls the click, our public void click method. And it refers to our class. So this is a really short and simple video, but basically this is the basics of how to like start your project, what what certain methods do, and stuff like that. If you think you can go on from here. Good luck to you. If you want to continue the series, I will be posting more videos as soon as possible. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comment below. This is a very short tutorial just to um, just to warm you guys up, I guess. Um, anyways, have a good rest of your day. Peace.